Gaming here is serious business. Gamblers spend more than $6 billion every year. And cheaters can make off with millions. That's why casinos use some of the most high-tech surveillance systems in the world to monitor their clients. Nearly every turn of a card, pull of a handle, or roll of a die is recorded Nine, by invisible eyes. Five, seven. When visitors step inside the giant Aladdin casino to gamble, they enter a wired world. Surveillance. Controlling all this is a man who stays in the shadows. We can see, but we can't be seen. Kind of undercover, high in the sky, so to speak. Bill Page is director of surveillance and does everything he can to keep his unit out of sight, hidden beneath the glitz and glamour. The average Joe coming in the casino does not look up. They would probably be amazed and say, whoa, look at all those black dots up in the ceiling. I wonder what they're for. They're actually camera domes throughout the whole property. The cameras may look simple, but from 40-foot ceilings, they can read the dial on a wristwatch or the serial number on a dollar bill. With a thousand cameras recording all the time, it would take one person almost three years to watch the footage recorded in just one day at the Aladdin. It's impossible to watch everything in real time. But for those who know what to look for, tapes can help confirm suspicions about cheaters. There's always that tendency there not to be honest. And it's my responsibility to prevent those instances from occurring. Here's a tape of a man playing roulette. But look again. No more bets? He tries to place a late bet. Here's the bet. The tape shows the man placing chips after the dealer has called off all bets. Here's the wave off. And he's pushing chips towards you, the confuser. No more bets. And there's, there's the bet. It's really pretty blatant, actually. But he finds a subtler scam in this game of blackjack. The man is bending cards to mark them and gain an unfair advantage over the house. This individual is bending the high cards out. Right there. Bending cards is a cardinal sin on the floor. Right there. Casinos call it cheating and eject anyone caught doing it. Right there. It's considered altering the outcome of the game and the casino does not like those individuals on the property. In this game of dice, everything looks normal until a careful review of the tape. This is the subject, and then we have the victim here. But keep an eye on the subject's hands. We saw a female reach in underneath an individual's hand as the individual looked away and actually took those chips. Done. That's him. Today, Bill is tracking a blackjack player who's been winning again and again. Stay with him. Oh, he did a double back. Yeah. Oh, he's one of them shifty guys. The surveillance team suspects he may be what they call an undesirable. Okay. Undesirables aren't technically cheating. But because they're trying to beat the system, casinos ban them once they're identified. If this man is an undesirable, hey, he may have been caught on tape before. Okay. Page needs a technological shortcut to find out. So he turns to facial recognition software. Let's see if he matches anyone in our database. It's the next leap in technology, and he hopes it will help identify people on the casino floor as problems develop. We take time-lapse snapshots of his face on a monitor feed that information into the software program. He needs to find just the right angle and lighting if the photograph is going to work. There are 80 primary measuring points on the human face. The computer describes the face by plotting these points and measuring the variance between the features. Taken together, these points create a unique numerical code 
called a face print. The computer compares the suspect's face print to a database of undesirables from casinos around the world. But the final decision relies on a human being. That's him, that's the guy, good match. This time, the suspect is an actor testing the system. But facial recognition helps Page's team investigate real undesirables one to two times a week. When we catch somebody doing something illegal or out of the ordinary, it's a big deal in the room because we've caught something that is that's going to protect the property. We, we take that very seriously. Good. Thank you. Facial okay. recognition systems like this still rely on high-quality images and human decision-making. But in the case of the London bombing, even if the bomber's photos had been in a database, investigators most likely would not have made a match. The images were too blurry or shot from strange angles. But scientists are developing a new surveillance system that could take facial recognition into another dimension. 3D imagery tied to satellite tracking. It's technology that could help find anyone anywhere on the planet. The challenge for future surveillance is not just to find a face in the crowd, but to identify one person anywhere on the globe. This lab is working on the next critical leap in technology. A giant dome uses 3D facial recognition to help identify people from virtually any angle. Police believe the CCTV pictures show them planning their attack. To find suspects in the London bombing, investigators had to screen tens of thousands of videotapes. They limited the search by time and place and eventually found poor quality images of the suspects. Any observer would hardly give them a second glance. But facial recognition experts like Hans-Peter Pfister know that a more advanced system could help in the future. The cameras were pretty far away in the subway stations and they saw these people from pretty weird angles. So to actually make face recognition more robust, you really need a three-dimensional face database. Just look at the camera. It'll take some pictures of your face and then store them. Fister knows the limits of the standard 2D facial recognition systems. While it can see through basic disguises, it can't identify people from the side. He puts it to the test. Eyeglasses don't throw off the recognition system. And it still works with a mustache, strange hair, 